This is the story of my second concrete building. I did a massive single cast two-story building a few years ago, which was okay, but it's more like a garden ornament than um, a fine scale light side object. This time I tried replicating the ideas that I have seen on John's Crafting Lab channel on YouTube, where he cast building sides and other pieces from concrete. I wanted to stay with concrete as I pretty much like the material, it is relatively easy to work with, it is cheap in the quantities we need, and it makes nice, solid and heavy objects. Since this is going to be my first attempt, I wanted to start with something simple. A simple flat roof building, something like a storage depot or a line, some general line side object. Basically five slabs, the base, the four sides and the roof. The doors and the windows are CNC milled from plywood and other details are from my you know, junk bin found in the garage, pieces of copper pipe, wire mesh for railings, screw caps for lampshade, that sort of things. The internal details consist of various 3D printed decoration that I have found online. First I started shopping. I got a bag of cement and a bag of fine gravel that is used to infill in between patio tiles and paving stones. I also needed a big flat surface to cast on and for that I used an offcut of uh, kitchen countertop which in my local DIY store was selling off for a few pounds. I got a modeling clay from a craft store that will be used for the mold. I also used some other bits and pieces like drywall mesh to make the concrete stronger and var various masonry tools mixing cups. The first job is to cast the slabs. I decided that all my slabs should be one centimeter thick which is roughly uh, 0.4 inches. I got a one centimeter square aluminium tubing that I used uh, for the walls and I pressed the clay against it. I did the two parallel walls like this and just handcrafted the other two walls. The clay sticks to the uh, kitchen countertop so once I press it down I can't really lift it up. But it's not that hard, and if the wall is not straight, I can just uh, fix it with a spatula. I was pretty much freehanded this, there was not too much planning put into it. I just had the rough dimensions in my head. Once the mold is done, it is time to mix the concrete. One scoop of cement and then two scoops of sand. I used my kid's sandpit scoop for that. Mix it with water into the consistency that you see in the video. Not too watery and also not too dry. First I added some concrete to the mold just to cover the bottom. Next I placed the drywall mesh um, that I pre-cut to size. I found that by adding the concrete first the mesh doesn't sink to the bottom uh, which is what happened on my base slab. So in some of the footage you can see this base slab and then you can see the mesh showing through at the bottom. I added more concrete to the mesh, tapped it to make sure that it feels evenly, especially along the sides and in the corner. I did not vibrate in any other way, just kept adding the concrete until it figured to the top of the mold. On the top I used a small crafting knife and basically hand vibrated the top to be flush with the top of the mold. This was probably the most co time consuming part of the molding. I designed all these top surfaces to be inside. So the surface quality, it doesn't really matter a lot. There was always a bit more material in the middle, but again, it's not really visible from the outside, so it didn't matter much. I usually did my casting in the evening, and in some cases, I was really impatient the next day. Sometimes I started demolding um, after about 10 hours, which is not a lot for concrete, to be honest. Uh, the concrete wasn't fully cured in some cases it was just still feeling a little bit wet. By this time the modeling clay had dried and shrunk so it was easy to peel away from the concrete or just use a knife to you know break it off from the surface. I cleaned the clay from the concrete residue and I put it back in the bag. By the way after putting back the dried clay in the bag I sprayed some water on it, sealed the bag and pushed as much air out as I could. After a day or two, the clay returns to the original pliable form. So it is really easy to recycle this modeling clay. At this point, the concrete is very soft and it is very easy to clean the edges with a very, very light sanding or even scraping off uh, the excess. 
but I did broke one of my slab, so it is better to wait at least 24 hours. As you can see, the surface with the countertop is beautifully fat. I was really amazed. The sand cement mix has amazing details. The side and the window openings are, are just as straight as your mold. It took some time to complete the slabs. Making the mold casting probably took me about one and a half, two hours every evening. The next evening you can break the mold, clean up the slabs, recycle the clay, clean the kitchen countertop and cast again. It is a patient game, not like resin casting where you, you will get your parts after 15 minutes. But again, a bag of sand and cement goes a long way. Once I had all the slabs, I started putting the building together. I used construction adhesive. It is easy to work with and it also fills the gap in between the slabs. It was especially useful on my model because I wasn't paying too much attention uh, to get the edges straight and square. Once the construction adhesive dried, I used two layers of paint primer. I'm not sure what is the official name of this product, but it says on the label that it seals the surface so it doesn't absorb so much paint. And after two layers, it almost shines. So I think it really seals the concrete surface and I hope that that will also waterproof the structure. Even though the, my sides are really nice and flat, I had all these imperfections along the edges. So I wanted to give this building an outside render, something like a lime render. And this is where I think I made a mistake because I added plaster to the mix. Basically it was only like cement and plaster and water and that's what I applied to the surface. It makes a really, really fine paste, which is easy to work with, but it sets really, really fast. I just smear this onto the surface, try to smooth it out with my finger, using water also to smooth out, but I really only have a few minutes. After that, it starts uh, setting even in the mixing pot. Adding too much water would also cause it to run down on the surface, and you don't, if you don't have enough water, then you just can't really spread it. So it wasn't really nice to work with, but I finally got this rough rendered structure, which I really like. Mm. I used my bad finger to work on the door and window openings and also to smooth the edges. Once the render was fully applied, I used the paint sealer again to lock this plaster layer to make sure that it doesn't get any moisture. So fingers crossed, let's see how it works out. After all this was fully dried, I applied two layers of white exterior paint. This is the same paint I used around the house. Nothing special, simple, off-the-shelf, home improvement store exterior paint. I also painted the inside. In the meantime, I started milling the door and the windows. All are different size, so I measured the opening with the plaster and milled them out. I used three layers of wood stain and also sprayed matte varnish at the end. I had some leftover plexiglass for the glass panels and I glued them on with a simple wood glue. The windows and the door sits inside the opening. Some trimming of the plaster was required. I fixed the doors with construction adhesive, which also sealed the gaps between the window and the concrete structure. I was planning to completely close up the building, so I needed to do the interior details first. I recently purchased a 3D printer, which I put to good use. I started looking around for suitable models in Thingiverse. I found some dollhouse furniture, a fridge, a sink unit, a chest of drawers, and a cast iron stove, office table, and some other random details like barrels and crates and a pallet, and even a C64 computer with a disk drive and a, and a monitor. I thought this um, computer is going to be a nice touch. This is what the peep or the guys in the in this building are going to use to manage the inventory. After all, this is some sort of like, yeah, warehouse kind of thing. So that was just a great fun. I needed to resize most of the models to fit this scale, but that was really easy in the 3D slicing software. I also had some cheap Chinese 1 to 30 scale models, which I used in this building. I had a piece of vinyl flooring as a carpet, which is again not the best in scale, but good enough to add some texture to the floor. I also added some interior and exterior lights. I purchased some SMD 5050 warm white LEDs in the past. There are two LEDs inside and one more in the lampshade above the door. They are all wired in series with a 1K current limiting resistor. 
It is designed to run from 12 volts, which is my auxiliary power supply on my layout. The LEDs operate below the full brightness, but they give off a very nice warm glow, which I really liked. I also applied conformer coating to the LEDs just to make sure that it lasts long as it will be difficult to replace them once I seal the building. I decided to run the wires um, to the side as opposed to the bottom of the building. I 3D printed a small electrical cabinet which I fixed on the wall outside uh, to hide the spot where the wire comes out. Next I added some fence details on the patio for which I used some copper wires and some wire mesh that I had lay lying around. I also applied some exterior grey concrete paint to the patio. In the meantime I cast the roof slab. I found this bitumen based uh, roofing tile which has this nice diamond pattern. I used it for the roof and also used some simple aluminium tile edges to hide the edge of the slab. And it also gives this roof like a modern tin lined look which again I quite like. The last step was to glue the roof onto the building. I did this in two steps. First I glued some wooden sticks like coffee stirrers but these are the wider type which the doctors use to push your tongue down when there is an examination. So I used these and I used them for two reasons. This allowed me to level the roof and I also thought that if for any reason I need to open up the building in the future maybe it will be easier to break away the roof if I have this wood layer uh, basically in between two glue layers. I guess only time will tell. I also added some more glue, um, I'm still using construction adhesive to steal any openings and weights uh, just below the roof. And that was pretty much it. I'm not sure what's going to be the final place of this building at the layout. So far it is just resting at the end of the station. It is not even wired yet, which I need to do soon, so I can see how the lights look in the evening. I am very happy the way it turned out. I think this is a very rewarding project. A very easy technique, which doesn't require a lot of specialized tools and materials, and also easily available and cheap. If you have your own house, and you are used to do some DIY, you probably have most of these available already. I have plans to follow this up and have a few more buildings built the same way in the future. Probably in the winter time when there is more time to work indoors. I would definitely encourage you to try something similar. But that's all for now. Thanks for watching and hopefully see you in the next video.